Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Sam Ellinger, first NFL career start. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So before we dive into the video, quick reminder, we have revamped the Quarterback School Patreon community. It has never been cheaper. There has never been more content available. It is a great way to support the channel. If you want even more Quarterback School content, really in-depth, deep dives, trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So we go into all sorts of detail, nuance about quarterback play, reads, coverages, route combinations, pass protection, run game anything and everything centered around the quarterback. If you are interested in that, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community. I sincerely appreciate the support. The link is in the description. As for this video, let's get into it. Sam Ellinger, first NFL start, first play here. Love moving the pocket, getting downhill, ripping it. This is an outstanding call for an offensive coordinator that just got the hook. My guy, Marcus Brady, Took a mini miracle to beat that guy back in the day. Hell of a college quarterback. Play caller, no moss. I like this play to start. Let's get on the move. Just technique-wise here from Ellinger, watch him carve this thing and get downhill towards his target. Little hinge. Really, if that's not there, all you've got is the over coming back the other way. But this is nice. One-on-one -on -one outside the numbers. Nice route. Flip that corner. And this is, in my opinion how you get a quarterback going off the launch point seal the edge get downhill let your guy go win go get a completion love it next one here this is a rough one third and two this is an rpo with a little man rub with the sneak flat coming from up top and the slot receiver just misses the rub so there's nothing there at the end of the day ellinger kind of makes a really nice play here to give it a shot looks like it hits 28 in the chest we're reading the conflict defender, the defensive end on the left, 90. See him hard squeeze down here. And this is about as easy as a read as you will ever see as far as this type of RPO zone read action. We're just running triple. So he's coming down hard. Here's the dive. We've got the quarterback ability to run it. And then we've got the sneak flat being the pitch man coming all the way across. Now, the nuance part here, the details from a man reguating company are going to be this rub from the slot receiver that we can't see. He needs to get in there and pick whoever he thinks has the sneak flat. So if you can either accidentally on purpose run into him or you can push your guy into him, but you can't let him kind of take the path exactly that he wants and go make this tackle. You just, th this is the part of, hey, is this on the coordinator? Is this on the coaches? Is this on the wide receiver? You know, to me, that's not a good enough route effort from 11. you got to get in there. I mean, he honestly, he gets out of the way, doesn't he? Doesn't it look like he gets out of the way there? It's like he doesn't understand what he's being asked to do. Because this should be a first down. And it's not there, okay? It's a disaster at this point. This move to keep your feet, keep your eyes down the field, and then throw it and hit the guy in the chest for a first down, can't catch it for him. Now, maybe the DB hits the ball, whatever. But that's a hell of a play from Ellinger. I like this design. Just watch the slot receiver. He's going to go try to pick the safety. And again, you tell me, does he get out of the way? Just hold your ground. You don't even have to, you, you don't have to do anything. If anything, you get to the spot you think he's going to be at. Basically, it's like taking a charge. You got to get to the spot you think he's going to be. And then you flip your hips, hands, two hands back to the quarterback like you're going to get a pass. Make him bubble the long way, and then we can get the first down. But if you make him take the short way and almost accelerate the coverage and make it tighter, it's just bad ball. And again, you know, this part to me is frustrating, both for the quarterback, the play caller, and we go out and make that type of play at the end. Damn, like this should have been a really special play, a really easy play to start. Then it should have been a special play if we catch the ball at the end. All that being said, I love the design, the RPO, take advantage of Ellinger's movement, and it's right there, just can't execute it. Next one, second and 12. This is a really nice throw to the slot down here to the bottom on an out versus kind of loose match or man. From the back here, you can really see the accuracy of this throw. Now, it's not the hardest throw in the world, but it's a dime. 
Again, that the linebacker type has got his hand out, right? His arm is out. So you got to put it right on him. I mean, right under his hand. That thing is a strike on the outside number. Love it. From the back, this is a really kind of popular concept. You see a lot of teams run. I'm used to calling this shock, which is really inside fade up top, locked hitch, and then a stick by the number three. And then you pair that. So this is the middle field closed or man side. You pair that with an open beater down here, which right here, must outside release go, and just this little out or option. But this is a really nice read, great design, gets the ball out on a strike. This is good coverage. It's just a better ball. Now, footwork-wise here, maybe we'll see it better from the back. He has a tendency to get heel clicky, and it impacts his accuracy sometimes. Right here, this thing is a strike. He gets everything going towards his target, eventually lined up. I love it. Again, just watch the footwork. Now, maybe he could be lined up a little bit better to his left if he knows he's going left. But right there, to me, heel clicky, even though we're getting pulled. Maybe a tick late, but that ball is right on the money. Next one, third and four here. I love the pocket movement. We're going to find the number three up top on a shallow. He has a really nice sense of the pocket. And I will, I will add that when he stays on the run and makes these throws, these things are so like aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> you love, I love to see it. I will say that just my personal preference is once you, what's going on here with my man Nelson here? Uh oh, whoa, whoa. Either way, man, that's some serious strength at left guard. Holy moly to stay on his feet. But when Ellinger gets up and he kind of like runs and creates, when he stays on the move like this, because he's got a guy bearing down on him that he sees, it's awesome when it works. The problem is, is when you stay on the move like this and don't reset, and I'm not saying he could right here, but I'm saying later he misses opportunities down the field because he's it's almost like a half run, right? Like he never gets up and resets in the pocket. But right here, this is a really nice job. Third down, buy enough time in the pocket, find the open guy. Now coverage-wise, how the hell does this happen? They're trying to play middle field closed man and trying to pass this thing off. And this happens sometimes. If we're going to run the shallow here, and we're in man coverage, some iteration of it, whatever, all these guys have man-to-man, -man, and your guy goes shallow, so he's on the shallow, and they're playing some iteration of it, not man-free. So they're only rushing four, and there's an extra player in the middle, whether you want to call that a whole player, a thief, whatever. And you have the then have the capacity to pass off crossers. So when he goes to the side, across the field the guy who has him is probably yelling across across or shallow shallow and he's trying to pass that off so that you keep the leverage so he should be out in front of this shallow well that's great when it actually works when you try to pass it off and all you do is not cover the guy and then the guy in the middle doesn't cover the guy well then you're wide ass open and that's how you get this open on third and short so a combination of bad defense allows this thing to be that open you can see the number three defender up top try to pass that thing off. Doesn't go with him, and he's wide open. But from Ellinger's standpoint, I really love the pocket movement. He does this a number of times in this game. It's just a great job being able to move, buy enough time, use your eyes, get a completion first down. Next one. Big play action here. Another great job with the movement. So he gets off that spot. He kind of stays towards the line of scrimmage on the move. You know, to me, this reminds me of one of my favorite quarterbacks growing up. I was a big fan of Rich Gannon. And his capacity to kind of do this, really nice. I mean, this is some nice torque, right? Off the launch point, up, reset. Now, this is also an example for me of what I'm talking about when I say, you got to get off the launch point there, right? Or you got to get up, whatever you have to do. We got essentially like two ships crossing in the night back here behind you. You got to get up in the pocket. Well, you can't get up because there's somebody here. So now you're off the launch point. I prefer, and I like to see quarterbacks get off of it, dramatic movement, and then reset. As opposed to the natural in inclination here for Ellinger looks like, get off the launch point, stay on the run towards the line of scrimmage. Now there's times for both. But you see him, just from a observational mode here, he stays on the move more than I think he necessarily should. Now again, 
it works out here. But I'm laying the floor, providing the evidence for some opportunities later in the game where he does the same thing and it doesn't work out. So again, great job moving in the pocket. Nice job keeping your eyes down the field, finding the little in or drift. And that's a big completion. That's a nice job because it's not clean back there. Play fake, up, on the move. Look at the torque. I mean, that's a really, really nice throw, right? Like this, no offense to Matt Ryan, but that is not something you're going to see in Matt Ryan's bag. And now we've seen it a few times with Ellinger. Next one here, third and two, zone read handoff. Again, just more layers that are essentially new to this Colts offense. You're not going to have Matt Ryan run zone read lead. Right here, we're going to read 95 on the right. He surfs it or tries to surf it. And it's a big play on a really crucial down and distance. Third and two, love to design the horizontal action, the fake jet sweep, and it's just zone read lead. So what is zone read lead? That's just we're reading the C gap defender. So first, like the play design, we're going to get the horizontal motion just to stress the linebacker type's eyes. We are then going to read this player right here. Can he tackle the back? So this is just spread triple. So can he tackle the back? No. He comes off and tries to surf this thing with like a balanced stance. Just hand it off. And you get these great vertical combos right here. And we're out the door. And it's a thing of beauty. And if he could tackle the back, so say he comes down and squeezes this thing, well, then we've got the split flow action from the backside sniffer. He's coming across, and now he's leading for the quarterback, which we'll see come into play later. So again, Love this element of it. If you're going to have this type of quarterback play, you got to run it. And there it is. Everybody blocked up. Right down the hash. Big chunk run. Outstanding. Next one. Second and one. Quarterback run. Whether this is pin and pull to the bottom or toss crack without the toss, whatever. What I can tell you that we can't have when we run this, and they run this multiple times, they get bailed out right here with a penalty. But you can't have the tight end take an L. You can watch the tight end. And you can't have the wide receiver to the left take an L. So you got two L's to the play side. That's not going to work. If you watch this channel, you know that I am a big fan of design quarterback run. And so right here, whatever, first of all, I don't love the shift to this position because I think it just says, look at me, stare at me, we're going to go right here. But if you want to do that, whatever. This guy has got to be able to just wall or reach. You're allowing yourself to shift and get in whatever position you need to seal the edge. Okay, so first of all, we have to have a seal here. The next one here, the wide receiver, you've got the next guy in there. You gotta go in there and seal him. I don't even care which, it really probably doesn't matter which one it is. Take the one you can get the best angle on because we've got the big tackle coming out to get the next. So we've got the angles we want by the outside two eligibles to be able to seal. We get neither of them and it jacks the whole play. So you can have great design run. I like this design run. But at some point, either the tight end can't make this block or we got to stop calling it. Because this first time, he gets beat to the spot, gets bullied, lucky that there's a face mask. Watch 11 and the tight end. Boop. L, wide receiver, L, face mask, bailout. Lucky. Next one, zone read lead. Okay, same, similar to the play we just ran two clips ago. This time we're going to keep it and get a first down on a really crucial third and short. So this time we're reading 96, same defensive end to the right. Again, really easy to see, right? Like he's crashing hard. This time we catch a little bear or mint. Down hard, we're around the edge. Again, just for fun, the wide receiver on the right, 14, can't block the guy. Not that it matters here, but again, using a quarterback's capacity to run, whether it's zone read, zone read lead, shotgun snap, pin and pull, toss crack. This is just a really nice job being just athletic enough, but enough being multiple enough in the quarterback run game. So again, we've, I drew this up literally seconds ago. He crashes down. Great. We're going to pull it. And now we've got the sniffer out to lead block. It'd be even better if the guy, if the wide receiver outside the screen could come in here and block the sniffer's guy. But man, 
regardless, we've still got the numbers. It's going to be a great opportunity for an easy-ish first down. And there it is. Ellinger can certainly do this. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. The Quarterback School Patreon community is another great way to support the channel. The link is in the description. You know about it. Check it out. Become a member of that community. In addition, we've got Quarterback School courses, a bunch of different courses, really the premium content available through the channel. So check out all those courses. The links are in the video description. And then we have a bunch of additional free resources available. We've got a pass pro quiz. We've got a play calling tool. So you want to learn how to beat quarters like the Colts were doing. Check out the play calling tool. And then finally, we've got a free quick game course. So you're interested in the quarterback school course. Check out a free one on the quick game passing game. I sincerely appreciate the support through a bunch of different avenues and methods. All those links are in the video description. As for this video, let's get back to it. Now, this next one. This is the big play action. Again, pocket movement. I love it. But this is the one for me where if we could reset, we'd have a big play down the field. So just watch the two receivers up top. They're going to run what I'm used to calling a flag and a sail. It's really just putting a stress on the corner. Now, because the movement, Ellinger has to kind of get off the launch point, but he never resets his feet. So really, he can only get it to that first level. So he ends up getting it to the check down type. So right here, instead of hit the launch point and run, you got to hit the launch point, get off of it, drastic movement, and reset. So see how he takes himself to the trouble here? Because we've seen this pocket movement now a few times, and it's great when it works, but you can't have that be the default. And again, that's what happens. You take yourself to the issues because this should be a big, big play. And what I mean by that is up top, we are putting a significant stress on the corner. So we're going to run what I'm used to calling a flag. You set that thing to the back pylon. Then we're going to have a sail or a corner come out here. And all we're doing is reading this corner in zone. If he tries to tweener this thing, you, let's let it rip. This is where, in my opinion, where it should go. Again, easy for me to say with a marker and a clicker, but hit the back foot. Get up, buy enough time, reset your feet. You've shown your capacity to have your eyes down your field, and this is a touchdown. So the little details here as far as the choices he's making with the pocket movement, I think a lot. it's nice to be able to have a guy who's mobile enough to not be a statue back there taking shots. But reset your feet and throw it to the back pylon for a touchdown. As opposed to staying on the move, even though it's already worked a few times in this game, because now you bring yourself to trouble and you end up skipping a check down. Dunk. Da dunk. Tough. Next one here. Third and eight. Really nice job ripping a hinge at the bottom. I love the anticipation. It's not a perfect throw. And I think we can point maybe to some mechanical issues that could help with the accuracy or at least the consistency of the accuracy. But I love the anticipation here. Being able to rip one-on-ones outside the numbers for first downs, it's a hell of a catch too, no doubt about it. We'll pause this thing at the top just so you can see the anticipation. Could he be lined up to the left? Probably a little bit better. Heel clicky, certainly right there. Anticipation, he's separated. Look at the wide receiver at the bottom. So it's third and eight. Run right past the sticks. That's outstanding anticipation. It's a really nice catch. Again, he's got someone a bit in his lap. We'll be able to see from the back end here. I just, I personally, and I, I know people, if you watch the channel and you've seen the channel multiple times, you're probably going to hear me say this many times, but if you know you're going outside the numbers to the left, let's dovetail or get lined up to the left. Okay, so what does that mean? That means when you go to hitch and you do not heel click, and this is your base, your two feet together, when you do a tight hitch or reset, you go from that position to this position and you're able to be over the center as opposed to dropping straight back, hitching, hitching, and now you're in the lap of the left tackle, left side of the offensive line. So not only do you dovetail and get lined up, but you also stay in the center of the pocket. So no, see how he brings himself to the trouble? Just stay on the hash and you're fine. Bring yourself to trouble. Heel click right there, okay? not the position we want to be in. So bring yourself to trouble, 
inaccuracies, but the anticipation overrides it. Next one. Love this one. Big play. Post up top. Quarters beater all day, every day. Beautiful ball. Write down the numbers. Love to see him hit a landmark. Just a massive play. This is really exciting. Nice pocket. Drop that thing out of a helicopter. Almost leaves the screen so close. Really nice job. This is quarters beater 101. So whatever iteration of split field coverage they want to be in, don't care. Hey, whether it's man, match, this right here, post route, all you do is come back here and look at this play side safety. If this play side safety does not get significant depth to be on top of that post, if he's worried at all about the vertical of number two here, especially when he's on a corner or seven, this thing is made to order. So as soon as you feel like this guy can run by that safety, you trust him to beat the corner and you're eyeballing this safety. So watch that safety and make the decision about when that ball is going to get up. See how the safety just sits there, flat-footed? It's on. It's over. We got it. They double-team the corner, and we got the big post over the top. So just perfect locked-in, quarters beater. A lot to like about this play. Great job being able to see it. Beautiful ball, right in stride, dot. Love it. Next one here, second and long. A little perimeter screen for my screen fans out there. Now, normally I don't put random perimeter screens on these videos, but I will for our guy Nelson here, left guard. Watch him. He's going to take two. That's 24-hour dumbbell press, 200 pounds each hand, maybe more. Right there. <laughs> I love seeing the big guys get out there and do creative stuff. Now, far from a perfect game for our guy 56, but right here, this is my kind of jam. Love seeing that. That's such a high football IQ. Also, crazy strong. Pretty rare to see the double dumbbell press in action. That's a really nice, well-blocked tunnel screen. So how they do this, Teams have a bunch of different rules about how to do this. But quickly here, usually these cats are stepping down. So step down, get out, you got the first one. So no, actually normally they have a protector out there right here. So he's got the first one. Left tackle's got the second. Second, The second lineman out has the alley or kind of the numbers or in between the hash, however their landmarks are. And then the last guy has got any peelers. So he comes back. But this block, the ability to get out there, not panic, turn around, and put both hands up, left hand, right hand, and they're not. he's not blocking like dudes in the stands. He's not a bouncer. These are NFL defensive players. He says one hand for you, one hand for you, and we got a big play. I love it. <laughs> I love it. This is my jam right there. Oh, my God, what a block. Awesome. Really cool. Next one here. This is a big play to the back, out of the backfield. It should be a touchdown. Okay, so it can be a big play and a nice play, and it should be a touchdown. Okay, so it's an outstanding call. To me, this is a more check down option release as opposed to like a true rail or wheel from the back. And what I mean by that is it doesn't necessarily look like a free release. So he essentially skips this thing off. So you kind of like come off under control, come downhill like you're going to run a check down, and then you go as opposed to like mesh rail where the guy's just running like a go from the backfield. So watch the nuance here of this route. So patience, downhill, then go. And a better ball here, maybe a little bit better job staying on your feet, and this is a touchdown. But I love the route. So skip off, downhill, go. Oh, better ball, touchdown, still big play. Love the play design, love the play call. This is an outstanding job of getting your guy the matchup you want down the field for a big play in the red area. Love it. Hell yeah. Next one. First and goal from the four. Quarterback run to the left again. Again, tight end wide receiver L. Okay. Quarterback pin and pull or no toss crack. This should be a touchdown. Okay. Watch the tight end again with the ridiculous shift. Okay. So we lose the tight end. <laughs> this time we overseal. Okay. Don't get any of them. Wide receiver, L. It's just, you know, this is the point for me. Like, I love this play. I love this play call. But if this guy can't do it and this guy can't do it, it doesn't matter if it's a good play call. 
it, we can't call it. So like, this is how, in my opinion, you get fired as a play caller. Not because this isn't a good play. This is a good play. But you're putting these guys in positions where they have proven that they cannot do it. So is it good enough on the perimeter? No. Okay, let me also emphasize that. But this has got to be our best play. First and goal, inside the 10, quarterback run, LL again. Okay, again. That's the part where you're like, damn, bro. Like, I can't have you calling these plays again for us. Because it should work. I get it and I agree. And it's certainly on the players. But now we're now putting them in that same position multiple times. And it's costing us. It's bad ball. Next one here, third and one. Okay, now, as much as we praised Nelson the last time, this time it's a bummer. Okay, now, first of all, I don't love the play call. Okay, so whether, I'll let it play once. Watch the left guard. So he's got a combo to 52. Whoop, that's tough. Now, whether you want to call this same side duo or inside zone, I really don't care. It, it should be there. Well, however we're doing this, let's just quickly do the math because it's not great math. Maybe if you're running weak side zone, you have it to this side. But the way that he's kind of like coming in and then downhill to me makes it more same side duo. But to this play side, to the wing side, just do the math here, right? So we just blocked up the offensive line for those five, right? Well, now we've got the wing and they've got four defenders. Okay, we've got two wide receivers off the screen that have two defenders as well. So the math is no bueno over here. This, this is not great math. You don't have to be a math savant. This is not what we want to do over here. There are no ways that we can have these two block those. So at the end of the day, if you want to run inside zone to the open side, you're going to have this guy unblocked and this guy unblocked in a perfect world. Now that's assuming we don't let this guy run through the freaking A gap to blow us up on third and one, yo. This is a four-point play. This costs us the game. Okay, let me re repeat myself. Four-point play costs us the game because our head is down. We're trying to kill someone as opposed to just executing the combo block and getting our body on 52. Okay, so you can be a great player and still have plays like this come up. But I think that there are some play called deficiencies here, <laughs> just math issues for me that I don't love, and we certainly have some execution. I mean, damn, the left guard is just getting assassinated. <laughs> on his back, on third and one from the one, cannot happen. It cannot. You have to do something one-on-one -on -one rub down here, or you have to quarterback run it. That's it. Those are your options. And if you're going to run it, you certainly can't let people run through the A gap <laughs> to the best player. Craziness. Really sad. Really cost them the game, that play. Next one here, first and six, power shovel. Really nice job handing this thing off. We're reading number 90, the defensive end on their right, our right side of the screen here. He charges down, power shovels off, just hand it off. It's a race to the corner. Just a really nice job here. Worth throwing this thing up. I know I talk about this play a lot. Everybody seems to love this play in the tight red area. This is who we're reading. So really it's just power read, and instead of the quarterback running it, we're going to get the backside sniffer running it. So there's the handoff. Here is the, if this guy goes up the field, who we shovel it to. Now the offensive line is blocking power. Hopefully they're getting a double back to here, or back, or gap hinging here. And then all we're doing from the right guard is wrapping for that play side inside linebacker, probably 52. You know, in addition to this, the other reason I really like this play design is because it's out of split backs. So we get this lead blocker for that bash. Technically not a bash, but for that sweep action. So they do a really nice job blocking this thing on the edge. Finally, we get some perimeter blocks. And it's a walk-in. A miracle. Who would have thought? Again, really nice job executing this from Ellinger. You can see him. When he hands it off, he fakes the shovel. Whoop! Nice job. Really outstanding execution here. This is a great play design. It almost makes you feel like, damn, why didn't we run this on third and one? So close, but really nice job walking it in. But again, it's on here, in my opinion, because Sam Ellinger is able to create
create this type of stuff and run this type of stuff. Matt Ryan ain't running this. This is the way the quarterback position is being played nowadays. And finally here, four-minute offense, third and five. Scramble. There's nothing there. Okay, if he gets a first down here, good chance to ice this game. We come up just short, and we end up taking an L. So a few things here. One, man, it would be great <laughs> if he could. You know, I think he's a good athlete. I don't think he's necessarily as dynamic of an athlete as some of the other guys who are playing the position nowadays. But he gave them a shot right here. And this is close. My goodness, that's close. But design-wise here, you know, there's just no winners. Middle field open, match coverage. Where do you want him to throw the ball? We got an out up top. We got runaways to the bottom. Wh where? You tell me where the ball should go. Now, is it a perfectly designed play? In my opinion, no. Okay, but we've got three runaways. He's covered on an out. He's ejected on a crosser. He's covered on an in. And then we've just got check down, some iteration of a check down down here. Okay, there's no rubs. There's nobody winning. There's no space. So you got to take off and run. This is a good decision. It's just he's not that elite, elite guy that can go get it every single time that you see some of these top tier guys on third and long, first man match coverage, be able to go get it yourself. But I mean, it's really close. And nobody's winning. Now, where do you want me to throw it, coach? I don't know. Go get it yourself. So close. Just super frustrating because I think he really played good enough to win this thing. It was there. Sure, there could have been bigger plays, but man, I love the effort here. And it was fun to watch. So that is a wrap. Sam Ellinger, week eight, first NFL start. I thought there was a lot to like. Was it perfect? No. Were there some big plays? Were there a lot of quarterback playmaking moments where I thought like, man, he adds a new element to what I've seen out of the Colts for the last few years? I think, yeah. And I think it's going to be fun to see what it evolves into quickly. Now, play calling change, whatever, kind of a bizarre thing for me with the quarterback change. But beyond that, I really liked how they used him in the quarterback run game. I liked his pocket movement. I think that there are some consistency elements of him being able to deliver the ball where he wants, when he wants, with the sort of ball control that you see from a Sunday starter consistently. But will that get better, and will it get better soon enough? We'll see. But moving forward, I think that they're a more exciting offense with him in there, and I'm excited to see what they look like down the home stretch. So thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.